Hi, welcome back. What a lovely afternoon. Now I've come outside. I need to find the habitats teeming with life. And in, in particular, a small solitary bee and some mason bees too, and some parasitical wasps too, but in particular a small solitary bee whose name escapes me, but it's the tiny little micro bee, I, I guess I would call it. I think it's Campanularum, something like that. And I'll, I'll drop that in in a second. But the habitats are, are alive with this bee. And this bee likes to use the smaller holes, obviously smaller bee. Why fight bigger bees for bigger holes when you can use the stuff they can't use? And this um, this structure here, which is the, the name of the channel in particular, is where they've broken out from. You know, along, among the others, they seem to have all come out on the same day, which is very strange. But the, the Wild About Nature logo is all using two and a half mil, I think it is, holes. And any, any of my habitats with that size holes seem to have erupted today with this solitary bee and they're everywhere I reckon there's about 200 to 300 here it's hard to count because they're little flighty buggers but they're everywhere and I'm so pleased because even though the mason bees are still a little bit elusive this year I've seen a few today hopefully the leaf cutters will fare better these bees are just everywhere and don't forget when you're looking at these holes that isn't just one juvenile for want of a better word that will come out those holes depending on the depth will hold as many chambers as as the the parent bee can fit into that hole given that there is enough nectar pollen and also um, structure you know to to form the inside of the cavities I'm not sure what these use. It could be sawdust or sand or earth. Obviously leaf cutters use leaves. Mason bees use earth because they, they kind of form a, a, a cement of their own. I guess that's why they're called mason bees. But these guys probably something similar. But without that up there to feed these bees, you wouldn't get that many in your garden. If, if I had this, all these habitats in this garden with no food plants, it just wouldn't be sustainable. So you'd get a few, but obviously the bee would run out of food and it would have to travel that greater distance to go and get pollen and nectar to fill the chambers. Substrate to make them isn't too much of an issue. I'm sure they could get that locally. But all the food to fill them with, they'd have to go further and further away and it wouldn't be viable after a while and they just move to a new hole somewhere else. So if you want nice habitats, you must have loads of food plants. Now these bees, I believe they collect their pollen under their abdomen, their scoper, which is the basket that the, the pollen gets put in, their scoper is underneath their abdomen. So they tap on the flower Whereas a, a bee, a, a bumblebee, will have scoper on its legs. I just found a nice little spider there. I'm not sure what it is, but it's green. I uh, can't really see it here, but it's a pretty little thing. There are loads of parasitical wasps out here as well, but I haven't really been able to film them so easily because they they don't like to be filmed and they, they take off at the slightest hint of trouble. Though on the D there, well, it's good having letters. I can point out where it is. There was one just then. Um, I'm not sure what it was called though. I'll look in my book and drop that down the bottom. If you re rewind a few seconds, you'll see it on the D. Let's see if we can catch it again. There's so many, it's crazy. They really have surprised me today. So I'll have to remember that in future, kind of beginning of June. That's when these guys, at least at this elevation, tend to break out. And uh, you know, there are other, like I say, there are some mason bees about, but today there's a mason bee right there going on to that one. That's um, Osmia rufa Os or Osmia bicornis. So there are some about, but really these guys are definitely, have definitely taken over today. I'm not sure if this video is capturing them because they are, they're only about 
I guess six or seven millimeters long. They're tiny little things and they're all going in those little tiny holes. So I was pleased I, I captured this. Can't see any parasitical wasps or bees or cuckoo bees at the moment, but they are definitely about. Perhaps some of you keen eyed watchers will be able to find some. But what a great find when I came out in the garden today. Really pleased. Thanks for watching. The next couple of videos will be happy tap videos because I've made two last weekend and boy I'm suffering for it and they've got shipped off to Holland, I guess the Netherlands um, and Bedfordshire. So as long as their recipients like them, they'll be dropped in as videos, only brief videos because everyone kind of can see how to construct them from other videos and I don't want to harp on about it but I think you guys appreciate how much work can be involved in those and one in particular that went to Bedfordshire is really complex and bespoke and you know it's about 13 14 15 hours work really so a lot of work goes into them and I think people appreciate that there's uh, the same parasitical wasp on that D again. I knew if we'd hang around long enough. And it's now on the A. And I will drop the name in. I can, I've got a reasonable view of it there. It's just flirt. It's on the D again now. Let's try to see if I can get closer. On the A. Come on, just land once more for us. There we go, on the D. Yeah, I've got a reasonably good shot. I will see what that is. And, uh, Perhaps find something interesting about it to drop in there. But thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.